Hi everybody and welcome to a little interview with myself and the wonderful Finnish guitarist Jonas Vidinius. Yes. Pretty good pronunciation. Ah, close enough. Ah, thank <laughs> you, thank you. So um, you've just heard uh, Jonas play a wonderful piece that he composed, Northern Fandango, flamenco guitar but played by a Finn, really something very special for the gallery. I think you're actually the first performer who's played anything of a flamenco style here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, which is which is really lovely actually. So it's it's fantastic to have that sound, um, and that style of playing on the gallery. And Jonas is really nice to drop in on the gallery when he's here in Scotland for a concert that you have on Saturday. Yes, on Saturday. Brilliant. So I'm going to put a link in the description so that everybody watching the interview and the performance can come and hear you play live in person here in Glasgow. Um, so tell me, Jonas, how does a a fin become so moved to play in a flamenco style and write music in that style? The story is quite simple actually. When I was, uh, I don't remember exactly, I started to play guitar at the age of uh, maybe four or five, if I remember right, but yeah. of course I started with the blues and uh, my father started to teach me. Ah, okay. He's not a professional guitarist, but uh, it was a hobby and uh, he. The blues is his thing totally. Yeah, nice. And I started with the nylon string guitar to play blues a little yeah. bit and uh, then I started to get LPs and cassettes. If someone knows which is cassette nowadays. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should know what a cassette yes. is, you know. And uh, different recordings. And then I was maybe at the age of uh, eight or nine, something like that. And uh, I got this uh, LP, what do you have there, actually? Yeah, yeah. So Friday night in San Francisco. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, yeah Jamela, yeah, yeah. McLaughlin and Pagalusia. Yeah. And then I started to listen to that a lot. And... Uh, I don't know why, but then I got interested in the other speaker because there's a stereo. And, uh, uh, of course, yeah. I started yeah. listening to one, uh, one speaker and what's happening there? And it was Pagoda Lucia who was playing there. Ah, uh, yeah. And I yeah. was really amazed about, uh, for the sound and also... Uh, I didn't realize at the edge of that uh, he's playing with the fingers. Actually. Yeah, okay. You thought maybe he's playing with the uh, I, I wasn't sure. Yeah, I was uh, yeah. only wondering how he does that sound, what produces the, the sound. And, how does uh, that happen? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. that was the point. And then I then I made a decision, I have to learn to play like that. Okay, <laughs> okay. And uh, I was lucky because uh, there's not too many flamenco players in Finland. Well, that's guess. what I was wondering. Like, who taught you? How did yes. you, you know? Okay, you but you, you know what's but happened. There are most of them were in Helsinki, the capital, yeah. the very south part in Finland, and some of them in Tampere. And mm -hmm. uh, then I'm from Lapland, Tornio, really small town oh there gosh. in the okay. south yeah. part of Lapland. Yeah. It's actually close to next to Swedish border. Yeah, small town there. And the only guy who could play basic <laughs> traditional flamenco things was living in Kemi, which is 25 kilometers from Tornio to the south. Okay, so the actually, only one upon Juvascula, which is like a 500 kilometers to the south there. Oh my gosh, and so actually you were well positioned. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. totally. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, then I started to get lessons from him and ah, the basic okay. stuff, really basic compass playing, buleria, tangos, alegria, and rajeos, and uh, Really traditional basic, basic yeah, things. Yeah. And then I got, uh, I remember when I got uh, Solo Kiro coming out by Pagoda Lucia at the yeah, LP. And amazing. then it, that, that's how it started. And then I started to listen more and more what I could get because it was quite difficult to get any material. Yeah. So yeah, the guy was called Jouni Elkland. And uh, mm -hmm. I really appreciate him. And uh, it's uh, it was I was lucky yeah. uh, in, in a way, but uh, it was hard hard job to do you can guess because everything you have to search everything by yourself of course my parents helped a little bit and uh, yeah and then uh, yeah. yeah and then i played classical guitar too mm -hmm. together and then i because there's no way you can study cl uh, flamenco in any school so i decided yeah. i i want to study classical music and yeah. classical guitar too and then i graduated i studied in Oul, and then uh, but then i also started my could say my professional career yet. I, I was the, at the age of 19 maybe when I decided that the flamenco is going to be my thing. This is going to be the path. Yes, yeah. yes. And we even just heard you play, okay, you were playing a, you know, in a Fandango style, but you've called the piece Northern Fandango mm. and you can hear there's some harmony in there that's not as traditional as some of those early flamenco styles that you'd mm. be learning, you know, the traditional dance forms. Mm. And we even had a, a, a joke about that that crazy that chord. chord it's right out of the Bach <laughs> uh, the D minor partita so you, you're not you're fusing things together you're mm -hmm. not just simply 
presenting a traditional flamenco mm. thing that blues background and everything it's all mm. and classical it's all speaking to the how you write music as well because you don't just write flamenco music you've written some classical guitar yeah, music yeah, as well. yeah. it's uh i haven't done any decisions yeah okay. what uh, what okay. to compose it's, yeah. it's it comes straight from the heart that how you feel but i've, I've played quite a lot of different styles during my life i've uh, for example i've spent a lot of time with metal bands yeah. during the 90s mm -hmm. and uh, played classical rock and then I, as I mentioned I played classical music and classical guitar too and uh, yeah. listened to a lot of different things and also our traditional music Scandinavian music and Finnish uh, folklore and stuff and yeah. uh, for some reason it's uh, when I started to compose it's like a, a how you say collection of my experiences yeah, yeah. and uh, that's how it should be I think yeah yeah, yeah. more or less it's, it's yeah. yes yes yeah. it's um and uh, when I'm trying to compose, of course, if you are, if I'm playing for the dance, so for for example, uh, the flamenco dancer is asking me to compose some falsetas for yeah. the tangos or and anything, then it, then it will be really traditional stuff. Yeah. Okay. But uh, when I'm comp composing my own stuff, it's usually influenced by something, and usually it comes from the Scandinavia, and uh, uh, yeah. it's a, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's, that's how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's very free, and you're using all of these different inspirations and things that have helped shape you into the guitarist that you are. They all speak to how you write the music as well. So when when you play on Saturday in Glasgow, will you play all of your own music, or will you have other things represented? What will happen? I will play traditional and my own stuff. It's, okay. Uh, for example, I I think I'm going to play the Malagenia, okay. which is yeah. really traditional. Yeah. But it's uh, if you think of it, how you play the Malagenia with the classical style, for example, the notation, and you have these certain types of melodies there. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, in my Malagenia, there's almost none of it because it's a, it's okay. quite wide um, style. You yeah. have a re a really so many d things in it. So it's a, but in the end, it's a really traditional Malagenia. But uh, if you don't know the name, you necessarily don't recognize. Oh, I mean, you recognize it in the end, yes. But uh, it's a long. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, that's that's one piece, and then uh, traditional Taranta and Fandango de Huelva. But then I'll play my own songs like uh, this Northern Fandango. I will yeah. play, mm -hmm. and uh, what else? There'll be one chassis tune. Ah, okay, also. nice, nice, nice. Yes, nice. and uh, yeah. I won't tell you the story. I will tell you the, in the concert <laughs> because I will have some speaks there. Too. Yeah, yeah. Don't give it all away. Yeah, know. yeah. Um, that's really nice, and and you know we, I've obviously seen that you 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 play in a trio as well with mm. double bass and with percussion, mm. um, and this obviously speaks to a little bit more kind of going into those other styles that are not yes. completely traditionally flamenco and yeah. not just you mm. in a solo style playing the guitar. Yeah. So yeah. that that does go more into jazz a little bit and more into sort of some of the the, the you know you talked about metal bands and stuff yes. like that and rock, but that yes. idea you know how does how does it work playing in a trio with with your guitar with the flamenco guitar let's still still call it at that point now i would say that with this experience i would say that it works pretty well but we have uh, i don't know how old we are actually when we started it's, it's something like eight years maybe that's nice yeah, yeah, yeah something yeah, like that but yeah. we have struggled with the sound a lot we are really interested how to produce big sound only with three guys and yeah. uh, how you should change for example with the drum set as i said to you earlier a little bit uh, that uh, there's a, we have those and those cymbals that those work well with the nylon string guitar, yeah, the yeah, sound, yeah. because you, uh, for example, you can have a really good cymbal, yeah. it sounds as well, and then you put the nylon string guitar there, and it sounds like crap together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it those, it's it, or, it, or it sort of masks the two different registers, they sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah the yes, space. yes, yeah. yes, and, uh, and uh, we modified the drum set a couple of years ago to ah. get, uh, rid of this, a certain type of sustains okay and okay. so on but uh, nowadays it feels quite balanced and uh, good yeah and it's really nice for example i i told caro the drummer a friend of mine that uh it's a uh, when i'm trying to play these songs with no band only practicing it doesn't yeah. feel like a complete song because i compose those songs for ah, the band yeah so you need it's, it's not it's yeah. not that i'm composed for the guitar and then yeah. i play the solo guitar and yeah. they are just playing there I'm yeah. uh, trying to compose the songs for the trio the that we have. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, every one, each of them has uh, really their own meaning why they are here and they are yeah. producing something into it. Yeah. yeah. So it's a. Uh, 
But there are a couple of songs we are playing together that oh, you, they work very well as solo. As solo pieces yes, as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's really interesting. It's nice when you hear um, about guitar players sort of forming ensembles that are not necessarily following just a straight pathway. I mean, obviously, guitar duo is very popular, trio mm. and quartet mm. and things mm. like that. But when you start to bring other instruments in, mm. you start to have these sonic challenges, like mm. you, you know yeah. the percussion and how it can overwhelm mm. the nylon mm. strings or how it can mm. it can just not not sit right, mm. you know. And mm. you have to make these adaptions and these changes. Yes. It's it's really interesting, but it's so liberating playing with other musicians. Yes, totally, totally. <laughs> and it's actually we have discussed with the guys that the, about this topic quite a lot. And uh, I I don't know how many people think about it, but when you are playing uh, as a band, yeah. Uh, my philosophy is that you should think the sound of the band. You you yeah. shouldn't think too much the individuals. Your own, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, because uh, signs, you, yeah. you can. Uh, there are lots of good examples that uh, there are a certain type of project, for example, which is not the like a long-lasting band. It's just a yeah. project. It's one month maybe, and then it's done. Yeah. And uh, people are bringing good equipment, and every each individual sounds really really good. Yeah. But together. Something's it's, missing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, so that that was the point that uh, when we started to modify the sound and uh, really record and listen to it, how to produce that. It's actually a never-ending story. We are still doing it. That <laughs> yeah. how to do this yeah. better and better. That yeah. we are trying to produce a really good trio sound. Yeah. That uh, my guitar, for example, I'm using two channels, and my main channel, which is like an acoustic content side of mic there, mm -hmm. and it's hanging here. It's uh, Audio Technica yeah. 350. Yeah. And then I have this uh, the Saturn mic here. Yeah. yeah and yeah. this, when you play only this, it, it doesn't sound very really good. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, really not good sound. You need to mix the two, so you need a little. Yes, bit it's of like a, that's the slave line. Uh, okay. So the, and yeah. it, I, I put some pedals there. It's yeah. effective line. Oh. So you. A little bit lifted up, you can hear the effects, but uh, here comes the from the other mic. Here comes the main sound. Ah, okay. And uh, that that's the how the now I actually lost the red line. What I was uh, telling you in the end, but uh, no, no. But it's about you know you're you're trying to make the sound of the guitar fit within the sound of the trio. So obviously you're having to sort of think about the 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 sound of the ensemble yes. and then your sound within it and how you have to adapt it and yes. change it because we do have a problem in ensemble with just our volume, just our dynamic range of yes. guitar, without amplification, without that sort of reinforcement, mm. we can't compete with percussion, even, no, 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 even, no, no, no. even a double bass really, no, really no, no. going for it. So it's interesting to see. So, t I mean, so on Saturday in Glasgow, people are, you're not going to hear the trio, unfortunately, you're going to hear um, Jonas play solo, which is fantastic, and he's going to be playing on this guitar. Tell us a little bit about this instrument, because you have more than just uh, you know, a simple relationship of coming to Scotland for a concert. Your guitar maker's here, no? Yes, yeah. and I'm getting a new guitar. Ah, yes, two okay. With me. This is a... Uh... So you're going to take two guitars home? Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll yeah. be fun on the plane. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I have a seat for the guitar. That's fine. So I will That's tie fine. them together, the two bags, and cover it with the... Uh, it's not a plank, it'll be the back, so it looks like one guitar. Very clever, very <laughs> clever, I like it. Anything we can do to deceive the airlines is always good. <laughs> okay, so tell us a little bit about the guitar, uh, Tolutia is uh, Sami Koivista, and he now lives in Glasgow. He have lived there maybe one or two years now. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. And um, yeah, this is the Flamenco, uh, Koivista Flamenco Blanca is this guitar, and it's uh, the top is Bruce, and this is... Uh, how is it? Cypress? Cypress, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. Evan, Brazilian, and Rosewood is here. And this was maybe Indian, if I remember yeah, right. Yeah, this looks like Indian. Yes. And then Ebony, Brazilian yes. for the, yeah. the saddle. On the, yeah, okay. And actually, I have this uh, Alba guitar beats here. Yeah, too. absolutely. Yeah, and also uh, Peter is here in Glasgow who's yeah. making these uh, accessories for the guitar for for tying the knots here in the tie block to make things a little bit more in tune and a little bit more stable, which is great. Yeah, usually yeah. people doesn't use these in, uh, with flamenco guitars. Okay, okay. But then I wanted to try because I'm always open for new sounds and new things. Yeah, yeah. And I realized that, that these are actually damn good for the guitar yeah. in this case because yeah. I, I'm the music I'm playing, I want wanted to sound percussive. Yeah. But also, I sometimes I need a little bit more sustain. Yeah. And this actually opens it a little bit more. Oh, because the Blanca guitar is, uh, itself is really percussive sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Straightforward. Yeah, we can hear that when you were, when you were playing your Northern Fandango. There's so much vitality and yeah. immediacy to the sound. It's it, almost percussive is exactly how I describe it. Like, you know, yeah. the sound is getting 
thrown at us. Yes, like, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Really fantastic. So yeah. this helps a little bit with the sustain. Yeah. Okay. So that's sort of compar. Well, like compensating is the wrong word, but it's kind of giving that a little bit more sustained, a little bit more robust sound underneath yes, that yes, because of strength. Yes, okay. only a little bit, but uh, yeah. if, if I take this away, you will notice the difference. You can hear it, yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's like, it's minor change, but it's it's enough. Yeah, it's yeah, enough. yeah, yeah. Lovely. Oh, the Alba guitar beats, that's very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. These are made of metal. I think there are some plastic and wooden ones even. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I think I've got some, some wooden ones that he's... The, and I've seen some of the students as well have them on their guitars as well, which is great. So... You'll play this guitar on Saturday. Yes. You won't immediately play the new no, one. No, 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 time. no, no, definitely yeah. not. Because you have to form the relationship with the guitar. Yeah. Before. Yeah. So uh, how oh, you say? I, I don't dare to do that. Okay. It'll be too soon. Too <laughs> yeah. soon. Oh, it's amazing. Well, listen. I mean, it, it's just fantastic to have had you here today, and to have listened to your music and have you visit the gallery of guitar and and uh, you know um, I hope you people watching if you're in Scotland or you're in Glasgow get yourself down to the concert on Saturday at the Spire concert series I'll put a link in the description and I'll also put a link to all of your different projects your trio and your solo stuff and your website so that people can find out more about Jonas um, and it's just been so so lovely to have you with us this afternoon. Thank you, it's really nice to be here my first time in Scotland. Well welcome well, Thank you <laughs> Okay, we'll see you all soon See ya